Okay, 9.45 a.m. Uh, <laughs> did everybody get any sleep last night? <laughs> Lost an hour as we jumped forward, right? Spring forward, as they say. You know, I, uh, because I like daylight savings stuff, because I like daylight in the evening. I like to go out after dinner and go play golf. <laughs> Can't do that when there's no daylight savings time. It's already dark when you're eating dinner. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians, uh, but this time in chapter 2, the first 12 verses. Next week we pick up on verse 13, okay? So, uh, as always, let's open with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you as always, for all the amazing things that you have done, are doing, and will do for us. Thank you for saving us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Jesus. And may your spirit be with us now. Guide us as we open the study of your word. That we would actually be able to learn something and apply to our life to be better servants for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, last week we talked about chapter 1 in Thessalonians, written to the church at Thessalonica, right? And remember Paul had gone to Philippi, was persecuted, jailed, all that, beaten, all that stuff, and left Philippi and went to Thessalonica, and a lot of these Jews followed him to keep persecuting him. So he was only in Thessalonica for three weeks, maybe a little bit more, right? Because it says he preached in the synagogue for three weeks. Then he left there, goes to Berea, goes down to Athens, goes to Corinth, and while he's at Corinth, he writes this letter back to the church, you know, at uh, Thessalonica, we call Thessalonians. Now, Excuse me. As we enter chapter 2, we're going to be talking about a little bit of the history of his time with Timothy and Silas, right, in Thessalonica. The founding of the church there, okay? So we start in chapter 2, verse 1. It says, For you yourselves know, brethren, that are coming to you was not in vain, <laughs> right? Now, last week we talked about how Paul had praised them because of their witness, how they had spread the gospel, right? How people knew about the church at Thessalonica all over what we call Greece, Macedonia and Acacia, right? And... So it was not in vain. They know. But he says, you yourselves know. You know. Now remember. He said, now remember, right? Brethren. Right? Some translations say brothers and sisters because the, the Greek word for brethren here is kind of all-encompassing. So it really probably does mean, you know, all brothers and sisters, right? He says, we came to you, right? It was not in vain. It was fruitful. And, of course, last week we talked all about how fruitful <laughs> it was, right? It says, but after we had already suffered and been mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the boldness in our God to speak to you the gospel of God amid much opposition. Now, let's put it in perspective you go on the road you go into a city with a mission and you preach the gospel and you get beaten persecuted jailed forced out of town basically and you go to the next town and do the same thing <laughs> right I don't know how long I'd be licking my wounds not just my physical wounds but my emotional wounds 
you know, questioning God. Are you sure this is what you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, here I am getting beaten. <laughs> right? We know, uh, we don't know of all the, where the five times he got the 39 lashes were, but, you know, I mean, beaten to the point of almost dying, right? Being left for dead one time. And he just gets up and goes and does it again. Yeah, that has to be pretty... Uh... you got to be pretty motivated. Yeah. Right? Now, he did have the Damascus Road experience where Jesus came to him, <laughs> right? On the road to Damascus. And then he went and restudied the scriptures for, I'm thinking it was three years, you know, and realized that the whole Bible is all about Jesus. Every book in the Bible, it's all about Jesus, right? And he understood that Jesus wasn't just the man that he thought he was, but was the Messiah, was the second person in the Trinity, the Holy God, the Almighty Creator, right? And so off he went, right? And we all have, uh, you know, mountain high experiences and the valley lows and that kind of thing. Uh, he, I could just, it just amazes me how he was able to just get up, travel to another city, and start preaching again. Mm -hmm. Preaching the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? Jesus is the Christ, right? The second person in the Trinity, God the Son, who came to earth, died for your sins, was buried, rose again on the third day. Right? Not complicated, but what are you saying? What are you saying to that person? You are a sinner. Your false gods, right, are false. Everything you ever knew about spirituality is wrong. Sometimes the gospel is not accepted very well. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Right? Mm -hmm. But he just jumps up, heads off, goes to Thessalonica, and starts preaching that same message. Now, we know that only the Holy Spirit can then convict people of their situation, that they are a sinner that they in need of a savior. They have a Jesus-sized hole in their heart. Only Jesus can fill, right? So he's like, I'll do my part. The Holy Spirit will do his part, right? So he jumps up and he gets after it and admits much opposition. He continues to preach the gospel of God. Verse three, for our exhortation does not come from error or impurity or by way of deceit, right? These people that followed him from Philippi and maybe some new ones in Thessalonica are attacking Paul. And they're saying things like, oh, that's baloney, he's telling you lies, he's trying to get your money, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? And he's saying, we didn't have any any error or impurity, right, or deceit. I just told you the truth. And that's what we do when we spread the word, spread the gospel, just tell the truth, right? Just tell the truth. The truth that Jesus Christ is the Lord God Almighty. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, he was given the gospel, right, and sent to the Gentiles. So we speak not as pleasing men, <laughs> right, but God who examines our hearts. It's interesting that the Greek word here 
for approved in the first sentence and examines at the end is exactly the same word, <laughs> right? Oh, in the... Uh, the Greek. In the Greek. In the Greek, yeah, same word, right? You know, but he's saying, uh, we're not here to please men. Now, if they are feeling the tug of the Holy Spirit and they decide to become Christians, you know, is it pleasing? Of course, right? I mean, the Bible tells us that the angels in heaven rejoice every time a sinner repents. Anybody becomes a Christian, even the angels in heaven <laughs> rejoice, right? You know, but he says, that's not... We're not here. We're here to please God. We're just doing what God assigned us to do. God gave him the assignment, go and preach. Preach to all the world, right? And he was sent specifically to the Gentiles, right? And that's what he's doing. We're answering to God. God's the one that looks at our heart and says, are you right? <laughs> right? You know? Praise God, he forgives us when our heart isn't right, right? <laughs> now, in verse 5, For we never came with flattering speech. Have you heard any of the TV evangelists that are giving you flattering speech? Right? As you know, nor with a pretext for greed. <laughs> we didn't ask you for money, right? We didn't ask you to, to do things, you know, to... Make those kinds of sacrifices. Now, did they ask him to change? Absolutely, right? If you move from worshiping false idols, right? All the Greek gods, da 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 da, to worshiping the true God, you're making a big change, right? Mm -hmm. right? He says, nor the pretext for greed, God is witness. <laughs> you know. Now, you know this, because you still remember verse 1. You know yourselves. You were there <laughs> when we were preaching, and this is what we did and how we lived. And that's kind of the point. Paul gave them the word, but he also gave them the example. He and Silas and Timothy gave them the example in their life, Right? We're going to read on here what he was doing later because Paul is a tent maker. So he's preaching, right, every chance he can. And when he's not preaching, he's making tents <laughs> to pay for his own expenses, right? He's not asking them for money. He's asking them to accept Jesus, right? That's the only thing that really matters. So verse 6, Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, even though as apostles of Christ, we might have asserted our authority. I mean, he could have explained how he was an apostle. He had this encounter with Jesus. He has a special mission, right? He could easily have said, now, all of you who accept Christ, now you need to help fund my ministry. I'm an apostle. He didn't do any of that. And you say, he worked and made tents. He focused on them becoming Christians. That was the whole deal. They then saw his example and went out and spread the word through all of Greece, right? Verse 7, But we prove to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. <laughs> right? That's pretty tender, isn't it? <laughs> you know, he was really gentle with them. Now, were his words always gentle? You know, when you tell people they're a sinner and they're worshiping false gods, you have to speak the truth, but in love. Show them the love of God. And that's what he did in word and in deed. That's why he worked his tail off preaching, you know, and making tents. <laughs> busy, busy, busy day. All the time. All the time, right? Having thus a fond, it's actually the word is very fond, affection for you, 
we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, right, but also our own lives because you had become very dear to us, right? So again, the example that he set with his words and his deeds. His, his, he gave them preaching the gospel, but also showed them the example. That's uh, like the best way to teach, right? You don't just tell them, they don't remember. <laughs> you know, it doesn't sink in. But when you see an example, now you're like, oh, I get it now, right? And that's what he was doing. You know, that's, and that's the way he lived his life. You know, God bless him. <laughs> Our own lives, because what happens? If you are allowing the love of God to flow through you and people accept Jesus, <laughs> yeah, you have great affection for them, of course. Right? <coughs> Pardon me. Sinuses. Verse 9, for you recall, brethren, our labor and hardship, how working night and day, so as not to be a burden to any of you, we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You know, back to what I was saying before about being a tent maker, preaching, counseling, helping people, and making tents, you know. Had a full, full day every day, right? Being persecuted, being ridiculed, being thrown in jail like in Philippi, right? It's all the things that he went through, but this is how he lived his life. Busy guy, right? I guess God plans for people to have these busy, busy lives. <laughs> but that doesn't have a, a, any smart situation that I can say you know that's where it ends but you've got your skill though with art and whatnot and your paintings and you know yeah. and you never know what God will do with that if you if you continue to paint mm -hmm. who knows what he'll do with the painting that's true right mm -hmm. you know so you can be as busy as you want to be <laughs> right instead of making tents you're making paintings right all right, <clears throat> so he was not a burden to them. You are witnesses, right? As he said in verse 1, right? You know, right? You are witness, and so is God. Who is watching everything? <laughs> the Lord God Almighty. How devoutly and uprightly and blamelessly we behaved toward you believers. You saw us, Right? How we, him and Silas and Timothy, how we lived, right? Now, he's writing this letter, remember, from Corinth. Silas and Timothy had gone back to Thessalonica and brought word of what's happening. You know, and Paul, of course, is just praising them because they're doing wonderful things, right? You know, and he's given them... You know, some people, this letter is written because probably people are asking questions about things. And as we move into the rest of Thessalon Thessalonians, we'll, he'll be answering other questions, right? And so who knows what people are saying? Remember, he, there, there's people in Thessalonica still saying, Paul's trying to cheat you. He's lying to you. This is a bunch of baloney, da 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 right? <laughs> you know? And he's saying, you, you were there. You saw how we behaved. So did God, right? God is watching us all the time, you know, which means he knows everything I'm doing. Yeek. <laughs> Worse than that, everything I'm thinking, oh, Lordy. <laughs> Thank you, God, for forgiveness, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So you were witnesses and so is God. Verse 11, just as you know how we were 
exhorting and encouraging and imploring each one of you as a father would his own children, right? You know, as a rule, fathers love their children, right? And want to teach them and help them to grow up, to be productive, well-mannered, <laughs> you know, citizens, you know, living and living their lives with Jesus. You know, in today's world, that's what we want. That's what I want. Praise God, my sons are all doing great. All of them, fantastic. Time. Okay. And now we have 18 grandchildren. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> right. So, just as a father would his children, he's encouraging them, exhorting them, imploring them, right, to follow God's will in their life, right? So that you may walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. God calls you. God calls you. He sends his other self, his Holy Spirit, to come to you, right, to convict you of your need for Jesus. And when you accept Jesus, the Spirit of the Holy God, the same Spirit who rose Jesus from the dead now comes to live within you. And you are now a Christian, right? A few pages back in Colossians, verse, chapter 3, verse 4 says, When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. <laughs> right? You know, I, I don't know that we have a really good understanding of that. I and mean, we could just say in glory, I mean, in heaven, yeah. But you in Romans 8, it tells us that we are already glorified. <laughs> now. I don't know exactly what it means, but it sure sounds good to be glorified by the most holy God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take it. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just sounds amazing. Right. And that's where we're headed. Right. You know, we, we hear about that in Romans 8, 28. It's also in Ephesians 4, 1. Okay. So... You know, we know that our deeds that were not for God get all burned up. Okay, they're gone. But everything we did for God remains. And, and we will have rewards in heaven along with being glorified, whatever those are. Now, what we do with those, I don't know. Some people say we'll probably just cast them back to the feet of Jesus because Jesus has done so much for us, right? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Haven't been to heaven yet. Mm -hmm. Although God sees me as if I was already there right now as a Christian. It's a done deal, right? And of course, God lives in all time simultaneously because he created time, right? So as far as he's concerned, we're already in heaven, <laughs> right? You know, amazing. It'd be glorified by the Lord God Almighty. That's the first 12. We pick up in 13 next week for whatever reason. That's how the quarterly has us divided. And so, Father in heaven, you've done so much for us. And it seems like we've done so little for you. Paul showed us a great example of how no matter what happens, to get up, and keep preaching. <laughs> keep telling people about Jesus. Our Savior. Our Redeemer. Our Lord. And again, Lord, I ask that anyone 
that doesn't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that they would accept Jesus, that today would be their day, that your spirit would convict them of their need, and they would join the family, and they would be glorified also. <laughs> we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen. That's our lesson in Second Thessalonians today. God bless you all and have a great week.